Hi guys, my name is Thomas and in this video I'm going to talk about demand side management and smart grids that are essential for future sustainable energy systems. So what kind of properties do future energy systems have? They should be climate friendly, thus no CO2 emissions. Furthermore, they should be environmental friendly and they should not be depending on fossil fuels like coal, oil or gas. To get there, we need to increase the share of renewable energy sources like solar and wind energy. Moreover, we need an electrification of the mobility and heating sector, mainly by using heat pumps and electric vehicles. Unfortunately, this leads to some problems. The increasing share of renewable energy sources leads to a fluctuating electricity generation and you're going to see that in the following animation. In this residential area we have solar panels and a wind turbine and the diagram on the right hand side shows the electricity generation during that day. In the morning it's pretty windy such that the wind turbine produces a lot of electricity. Then the sun rises and the solar panels produce a lot of electricity but later it becomes cloudy such that the electricity generation becomes more volatile and at night we have some wind energy again. The resulting diagram on the right hand side exemplarily shows the electricity generation of renewable energy sources during one day. One solution for tackling the problem of the fluctuating electricity generation by the renewable energy sources is demand side management. But what exactly is demand side management? Let's have a look at the electricity generation and the demand. On the upper picture you see the electricity generation, on the lower you see the typical demand curve. And if you match the curve you're gonna see that we have periods with a surplus of electricity and periods with a shortage of electricity. This is a problem because the generation and the demand have to be balanced in the grid all the time. So a paradigm shift has to be realized in future energy systems the demand has to follow the generation, meaning in periods with high generation we have to increase the demand and in periods with low generation we have to decrease it. This is actually called demand side management. And ideally the demand and generation curve would fit as you can see on the right picture. The question is now how can this be done? One important ingredient for demand side management are flexible electrical loads. Let's have a look at some important flexible electrical loads whose power consumption can be shifted in time. So there are flexible loads in industry, then there are battery storage systems, electric heating devices, electric vehicles or household appliances like dishwashers or washing machines. So I'm focusing on electric heating devices, here most importantly heat pumps, but also electric heating elements inside hot water tanks, storage or fan heaters and air conditioners. Now I'm going to illustrate to you demand side management with a heat pump in a building. So this building has a heat pump, a hot water tank, an underfloor heating system and we measure the room temperature. Actually every human being has a thermal comfort range and in this case let's say it's between 22 and 20 degrees Celsius and this can be exploited by the heat pump for adjusting its demand. And on the left scale you see the electricity demand of the building and it varies depending on the appliances that are currently running. When the sun shines, the solar panels produce electricity that can be used by the heat pump for heating up the building and the hot water tank. And when it gets cloudy, we decrease the electricity demand by switching off the heat pump. Now the room temperature and the volume of the hot water tank slowly decrease. And whenever we have wind energy in the system, we start again heating up the building and the hot water tank. The same can actually be done with an electric vehicle. Whenever we have green energy produced by the renewable energy sources, we charge the electric vehicle. This way the electricity demand of the building can react to the current generation by the renewable energy sources. The fluctuating generation is not the only problem. Basically the electrification of the mobility and heating sector may lead to increased peak loads in the grid. There is a need for peak shaving in a local grid. Here in this residential area you see six buildings and all of them are equipped with heat pumps or electric heating elements. And we have a transformer that connects the local grid to the distribution grid. 
Now it's important to reduce the stress on the transformer for not damaging it. On this scale, you see the electrical load of the residential area, and we have a critical level that should not be surpassed. When we have an uncoordinated electricity consumption, meaning that more or less all buildings are heated up simultaneously, then we're going to have really high electrical loads in the grid. And if we additionally charge electric vehicles, we might surpass this critical level and the transformer might be damaged or even fail. In order to decrease the peak loads in the grid, we can also use demand side management to coordinate the electricity consumption, as you can see in this sequence. The good news is, we don't have to charge every electric vehicle simultaneously and heat up all the buildings simultaneously, because we have thermal storage in the buildings, like the building mass itself or that water tank, and we have a battery. So we can shift the electricity consumption in time and thus make sure that we stay always below this critical level regarding the electricity load, while still satisfying the mobility and thermal needs of the residents. Another essential ingredient for the monsite management are smart grids. So the question comes up, what is a smart grid? In a smart grid, all the buildings have an energy management system that manages the local energy consumption of the building. Furthermore, we have smart meters in the grid that measure the local energy generation or consumption. In a smart grid, all the buildings and generation units can exchange information about their current electrical load. I want to emphasize here that this can and will be done by preserving the privacy of the inhabitants. The last ingredient for demand site management are intelligent control algorithms. I'm going to focus on them during the next videos, as this was the main topic of my PhD thesis. Let me say that demand site management is just one part of the solution. We additionally need controllable renewable generation from biomass and hydropower. We need storage systems like batteries and pump hydro storages. And we need a grid extension. Furthermore, we need power to gas and liquid facilities, meaning that we generate hydrogen by using renewable energy sources, which is then later converted into gas and fuels. All of the other solutions are influencing and are being influenced by demand side management. This is why demand side management constitutes a pivotal task for future sustainable energy systems. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And if you have any comments, just feel free to share them. See you in the next video. Stay hungry for knowledge, my friends.